Hope everybody's having a great weekend. It's a beautiful day outside after this. I'm going to get some, uh, get some sunshine. Let's get started. Hope everyone's doing gr uh, great. Welcome to the One Man's Path podcast. I am your host. And today I'm talking about some of the statistics on cheating and seeing what's going on there. We have a story out of the UK uh, about a woman who uh, has uh, needed multiple sexual partners, as she puts it. And then she's also got some uh, interviews of, uh, or yeah, some interviews of some other women and why they cheated. So let's get, uh, let's see what we got here. I needed multiple sexual partners. Women share why they really cheated on their partners as female infidelity reaches new heights. Stories from women about why they cheated on their partners have been revealed. Sounds exciting. According to Nadia uh, Bacotti, more women are cheating than ever before. Now Ms. Bacotti has revealed the reason why women have chosen to cheat, including needing multiple sexual partners and wanting to explore. Sounds like a guy, right? need multiple partners and I want to explore. We regularly hear stories about men cheating on their partners, but we don't often hear about women who are unfaithful. According to Nadia Bacotti, the Sydney-based editor of She Said, research shows more women are cheating than ever before, with numbers having risen by 40%. And Ms. Bacotti was one of them. It would be easy to blame my ex-husband, to say he was neglectful, verbally abusive and unromantic, but he was the opposite of all these things. The truth is I cheated simply because I could, she wrote. Now that's solipsism, right? She's just looking for her own needs. Yeah, I did it because I could. This is what I wanted to do. End of story. Now Ms. Cody has revealed that a number of reasons why other women have chosen to cheat. I needed multiple sexual partners. One woman openly admitted that she was once a chronic cheater. I was acting on my needs for multiple sexual partners, but I didn't have a model of how to do it ethically until I was in my 30s, she said. Once I discovered the polyamory model and began to live it, all my cheating stopped. Well, of course it did, because that's the whole idea behind polyamory. You didn't stop cheating. You found a lifestyle that's different. Polyamory requires that all the people involved in that relationship and that polyamorous relationship has to be open and honest with everyone. So if you're open and honest, you can't be cheating because everybody knows it. Everybody knows what you're doing. Everybody knows everybody's who's having sex with who. So she didn't stop her cheating. She just found a lifestyle that promoted what she wanted and that's fine. Be open, be honest and move forward. If you're in a LTR, and you have to be you have to be open and honest. You have to set your frame, tell your partner what it is that you uh, are expecting to do, what you're not expecting to do. Get it out in the open. Do not hide it in the background. Do not hide anything. Uh, what was Jordan Peterson said? Um, you know, do not hide things in the fog. That's one of the things he's talking about. Be open and honest. Don't cheat. I wanted to explore other options. Another woman said she cheated because she was in a serious relationship when she was too young. Now, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what she considers too young. You know, was she uh, 18, 19, fresh out of high school? Or was she in her 20s when she got into a serious relationship? Um, what is too young? Then a lot of women who are, quote unquote, too young in these relationships they start getting, actually, what it is, they get jealous of their friends. They start seeing other people going out, having a good time, and they uh, feel trapped, as they like to say, um, being too young. Instead, they just wanted to go out and sow their oats and party and, and uh, pull a carousel, basically. This means she couldn't explore herself sexually or try out the different relationship dynamics that were missing from her relationship. That's the other thing. How, uh, the different relationship dynamics that were missing from her relationship. I love the way they put that. Um, yeah, they're missing. I need these in my relationship background. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, she wrote that she knew she took the easy way out, but she was unprepared to end her relationship because of how close they were to each other's families. Now, this is a person that is not taking responsibility for her actions. Okay. She's blaming 
her lack of being upfront and honest and getting out of the relationship on somebody else. In this case, their families. Our families are too close. It would hurt our families. No, you don't want to take responsibility for your actions. You don't want to come, you know, come clean, come honest. Uh, if you're, <laughs> if you're going to go out and you want to sow your oats, fine, do that, but be honest with everybody involved, break off the relationship. Don't string anybody along. Take responsibility. Another woman, he never wanted to go out. He ignored me to play video games all day, but then he would get offended if I wanted to go out, another woman said. Although he was welcome to go whenever she went, the woman said he would choose not to go and whine about it instead. Okay, that's like a, that's like a beta. If he's whining about things, he's a beta. That's why she's going out and that's why she's not uh, uh, respecting him. That's why this happened. He's just a beta male, another man child, a soy boy, whatever you want to call him. Eventually her boyfriend became jealous when she started earning more money than him and she met the man she cheated with him on at her new job who later became her boyfriend. Okay, that's a bunch of bull there because guys do not care how much money a woman makes. So he does not get jealous that she's making more money. He does not care. Now, he could be jealous that she was cheating on him and there was another man involved, but at the same time, that's his fault, right? Because he was ignoring her, playing his video games, not being an active participant in their relationship, not setting a frame, not being the man. Okay, he ignored her. Then, what did she do? She found somebody else. I would have to say, don't know because it doesn't say here, that probably the guy she met at work is making more money. He paid more attention to her and uh, was more of a, he may not be a, an alpha male, but he was definitely somebody who was setting his own frame and paying attention to her. And that's what she craved because she wasn't getting that from her current boyfriend. Let's continue here. They were friends before things escalated. And although she felt guilty at first, she didn't feel guilty enough to stop. I think that speaks volumes right there, right? Let's continue on here. I'm impulsive, one woman said. Her cheating was often a result of her being impulsive and not caring about the other person. Well, that's solipsism. She only cares about what she sees, what she wants. Solipsism is not seeing, you know, past your nose. It's solipsism has a lot of the single letter into it. I, I want this, I want this, I, I, I. Let me continue. It was a long relationship, but I realized the fact that I put myself in the situation where I was able to cheat. Already proved that she wasn't, already proved that it wasn't something I really wanted and he wasn't someone I really loved, she admitted. So I did it. And also because I'm pretty impulsive and I don't think things through, I want what I want. Here again, that's solipsism right there. Okay, that's, uh, that's it for that, uh, that part of the article. I'll link that in the show notes. And uh, you can go take a look at some of the videos that are on there. Now, the thing is, uh, I wanted to look at some of what the current stats are on cheaters. Or, or just cheating in general. So this is from uh, Secure Forensics. This is the, uh, some of the latest estimates uh, that are happening between, I think if I remember right, uh, let's see, what was this here? What were the years on this? Well, this is October 29, 2018, when this article is written here. So let's take a quick look at some cheater statistics. 10% um, start online. It's an estimate that 10% of affairs start online. So this is what we talk about. Uh, if, you, if your wife or girlfriend is always on their phone, always on social media, um, if they're kind of all the pictures on her Instagram account are about her and she's not a model, She's getting validation and she's starting to look, right? Somebody's going to slip into the DMs and start talking to her. So about just sort of verifies or yeah, validates that 40% online to real life. 40% of online, on life affairs start turn into real life affairs. So here they start talking on whatever social platform they're at and they could even start having phone sex. I shouldn't say the word sex. YouTube will shadow ban me. Uh, 
backbone relationships. They'll start uh, testing the waters this way, and then they'll finally say, why don't we meet? And then they'll consummate the relationship. Yes, they will. 9% is revenge. Revenge and fidelity accounts for 9% of cheating behavior. Re revenge cheating. Well, I would love to know what the justification that people have for revenge. Uh, that would be very interesting. Why they think they're taking revenge. Because this would imply that it's a, it's like almost a, you know, well, he cheated on me, so uh, I cheated on him, or vice versa. She cheated on me, so I'm going to get back at her by cheating on her. Um, that would be interesting. I would like to know the, more of the breakdown on that. I don't think, we'll, we'll take a quick look in the article. I don't think it breaks it down, though. 36% co-workers, 30%, 36% of cheaters have an affair with their co-workers. And I mean, that's pretty obvious. You spend a lot of time at work. You spend, you know, at least a third of your day at work. So your co-workers, you're going to have more of a relationship with them than you are with your own spouse because you just simply spend more time with them. And the other thing is too, is that once you've done a full day's worth of work and you get home, you're tired. So you're not going to have a quality time with your spouse or whoever you're with, your partner, I should say. Um, and that at work, everybody's on their best behavior and everybody's, uh, you know, fronting and uh, peacocking and looking their best. And at home, you just have gotten to a point where you're probably in a drudgery, a routine, and you're not making it exciting for each of your, uh, of your partners. So that makes sense. 30% of coworkers. 22% male. 22% of men have cheated on their significant other. Conversely, 14% female. 14% of women have cheated on their significant other. So we know that men um, are trying to spread their seed, right? That's the way men are. Because women have one egg. Men have multiple seeds. So a woman is much more protective of that one egg and men are out there to spread their seed because we can do it. Uh, what, what is it they say? You know, uh, uh, eggs are expensive and male eggs are cheap because there's so many of them. So this sort of falls within the evolutionary, uh, you know, uh, boundaries of that men will go out and seek as many women as they possibly can. So that, that part of it makes sense to me on that. Uh, let's see here. It's, uh, it's estimated that 10% of affairs start online, 40% of affairs in real life. Okay, we read all that there. Um, myth about cheating spouses. I haven't read this yet, so let's take a look here. Popular culture and cheating behaviors purported in movies and media can lead someone to believe that their spouse is cheating, but the plot points but the plot points are not entirely accurate. Sometimes the most obvious signs of, of a cheater are right in front of our eyes, but other times they are hard to spot. The misconception, misconception that surround a cheating spouse can be the assumption that cheating happens during the day. However, much of a change in someone's nightly schedule make a spouse suspicious. In fact, before work, during the day, but rarely at night. How to, how to avoid getting arrested? <laughs> That's a, there's a twist. Um, however, infidelity involves, is involved is almost always emotionally charged. This can lead to poorly made decisions for the person who has been cheated on. It is important to remember that your name is not karma. Wow. Regardless, the desire for revenge is not worth the legal consequences. That will result from any emotional charged actions. In some cases, employing your friends to snoop seems like a good idea. However, this can get them into trouble too. So what activities that violate, so what activities that violate privacy laws? Hacking password protected accounts, snooping into computers that are owned by another entity like your partner's company, placing spyware on your partner's mobile device without them knowing, audio or video recording of your partner without their knowledge. Hmm. Um, let's see here. Let's skip down a little bit. How 2018 online cheating statistics compare to 2019. Since 2018, the online infidelity has ridden amongst men due to the use of dating apps. In fact, a recent study by YouGov found that men are three times more likely than women to use dating apps and websites for casual sex. However, a third of Americans feel that online dating apps and websites killed off what was left of romance. Yeah, very true. Swipe left, swipe right. Don't find out anything about the person. Just, do I like the way they look? And if so, let's hook up. Next. 
In government studies, they discovered that one in six people who are currently dating app users use the apps to cheat on their partners. So here again, look at uh, your wife or girlfriend's phone and find out if she has any of the dating apps on there. And don't take any excuses past that point. Oh, well, I'm just, you know, I'm monitoring, monitoring it for my girlfriend or I'm helping her out. I'm seeing what she, no, she's starting to cheat or is she's cheating? One of the two. Of the number of participants they surveyed, 11% of millennials said one of the main reasons they use a dating app is to cheat on their partner. Nice. The general social survey collection of data in the last 20 years discovered that infidelity amongst women increased by 40% while male infidelity rates remain steady. However, the number of cheating men is still higher than the number of women who cheat on their romantic partners. The study states the number one reason people cheat is sexual dissatisfaction. And while the study does not factor in online infidelity or dating apps, those apps can make it much easier for cheaters to remain anonymous when cheating. So they're saying that uh, the number one reason people cheat is sexual dissatisfaction. Here again, now I don't know, but I'm just wondering how many people's... Uh, view of what sex should be is influenced by porn you know because porn you know everybody's got to have this uh, superhero sex you know hanging off the ceiling fan while spinning and uh you know that type of a thing i think it puts an unrealistic ex uh, expectation in people's heads of what sex is really supposed to be because we know porn's over the top it's meant to be a fantasy type of a thing it does not show any kind of reality if so i would still be a pizza delivery boy that's all i could say um, I think I'm going to leave it right there. I'll link this in the description as well. So you can take a look at all the uh, different things like behaviors, cheaters, uh, secure for, uh, forensics can help. Obviously this is an ad, but it's, it's interesting. Some of the statistics that they have in here. Um, guys here again, uh, when it comes right down to it, watch what your partner's doing know that if they're if they're spending a lot of time on their phones more than likely they're looking for a hookup they're cheating on you um, also be involved in your relationship if you're in an ltr be involved in it that doesn't mean do everything she wants to do that means set your frame set what it is that you uh, are expecting what your expectations are and be involved in that relationship okay uh, be very aware. Don't take any of it for granted. I did a story the other day where uh, this guy in Australia, he white knighted his fiance and she had all the red flags, all the red flags. And he simply ignored it. He was like, ah, she's had a hard life. And he, he basically, he justified in his head all these things. And in the end, this guy got burned big time. Um, go check out that story. It'll be linked off uh, on the on the description as well. But be aware, be careful, you know, um, and just take responsibility. All right, have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Let